If it wasn't for the protests following George Floyd's murder at the hands of Derek Chauvin and the Minneapolis Police Department, we certainly would not have seen the arrest and its tragic outcome receive as much scrutiny as it did since prosecutors initially declined to take up the case. Elijah McClain was walking home after buying drinks at a local convenience store, wearing the same ski mask he had on when he was arrested, which was reportedly a part of his signature style, and what prompted a random bystander to call 911 and report McClain as a suspicious person. He has a mask on. He looks good to you. I he might be... Okay. A good person or a bad person? Yeah. Or a mask on. Okay. Were any weapons involved or mentioned? No. He, he went like this, dude. Oh, he went for his gun. Oh, oh my God. Oh. He can bend his knees a little bit so he can balance himself. He keep, he's, he's kicking around a little bit. Still, um, so he's gonna stay, sit on. Yeah. Somehow, both officers' body cams were knocked off their uniforms while they wrestled McLean to the ground and put him in cuffs, as we can barely hear McLean pleading with the officers that he's having trouble breathing. I just shut it off because it's yeah. split in half. <laughs> so, something fell out right here on the grass, but I don't know what, what it was. It probably looks like a... Uh, Gotta throw up, dude? Yeah. Throw up right there, okay? Don't throw up on me, though. We got fire coming, right? Yeah. I call him from when he first went around. Out here walking around with a ski mask on. See, I need the cell phone picked up. Probably, probably just yeah. bring it over by him, dude. And then, uh... We then hear two officers accuse McLean of reaching for one of the officer's firearms in a clear attempt to paint McLean as the aggressor during the arrest. He kept doing this and he kept saying things that didn't make any sense. Um, and then I try, I'm like, hey, bring him over the grass. So if we do have to take him down, we can take him down the grass. Not by, because we're right here by the rocks. Um, and then he starts going even crazier. So we get him cornered against the wall. What's he doing when he's acting crazy? He's, he's like saying stuff and he's holding his arms in. And he's like, I, I, I don't remember exactly what he was saying right now. Now we hear that McLean went unconscious for at least a couple seconds while he was being handcuffed after Officer Nathan Woodyard put McLean in a chokehold, an inhumane police tactic that cuts off blood flow to someone's brain by squeezing the neck's main blood vessel shut. Basically, it's a headlock technique designed with the sole intention to deprive someone's brain of oxygen in as short amount of time as possible. But, uh... So I initially tried, and then his, I was in a bad position. I didn't want to hurt his neck. Put his arm down here, and I could drop my knee right in his tricep, and he can't move. Uh, At least once successfully. Okay, so. okay, okay, okay. Stop messing around, well, man. Chill out. Well, we'll just leave him. You've already been told several times to stop. I can't fix myself. Ow. We'll just leave him there until the ambulance gets here, and we'll just put him down to the end. Dude, uh, chill out. He's got a mask on his face, acting kind of weird. Nothing really criminal. My officers go to make contact with him. He starts acting crazy. Uh, they go to hang on him. He attacked them. Uh, Rosenblatt, he ended up trying to put a carotid on the guy. Uh, stop, and, and actually, we'll stop fighting actually us. was stop able to put the carotid on him. They put him out. They were able to get him out of handcuffs. We're still struggling with him. I have fire on scene. And that's where we're at. I just want to let you know, yeah, we did actually apply the carotid tonight. So. As two officers continue to restrain McLean with one kneeling on his back and torso area, we clearly hear another officer presumably tell his superior that McLean wasn't doing anything criminal that prompted the stop, other than him being reported as suspicious.
McLean is then injected with 500 milligrams of ketamine by the paramedics since the officers are still convinced that he's a threat to their safety, despite everything he's been subjected to so far, showing a callous disregard for McLean's own safety that eventually led to his demise. According to Aurora Fire Rescue's own guidelines on administering the anesthetic, McLean received well over the recommended dosage for someone his size. Though the coroner's report stopped short of definitively concluding that an overdose was the sole cause of McLean's tragic death, since it was possible that he could have had adverse reactions to the drug outside of an overdose, especially given the trauma he just experienced. Now, over four years since Elijah McLean's death at the hands of the Aurora Police Department and fire rescue teams, only one officer, Randy Rodema, has been found guilty of criminally negligent homicide and assault. While Officer Jason Rosenblatt, the officer who McLean was shadily accused of trying to take the gun of, has been acquitted on reckless manslaughter and assault charges he was facing. Randy is still employed, but is on suspension from the department while Rosenblatt was fired back in 2020. Officer Woodyard, who knocked McLean unconscious, as well as the paramedics who administered the ketamine injection, Jeremy Cooper and Peter Sicheniak, are facing their own trials in the following weeks. McLean's mother, Shanine, was obviously and rightfully irate at this ruling, saying that justice wasn't truly served since everyone involved in Elijah's arrest played a role in his death.